That's why I got Tim Hardaway number nine. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Big up for Tim Hardaway. Number eight. Arguably, I think this dude, I, you know, I don't even want to rate him. He one of my favorite, uh, 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 he one of my favorite point guard. He one of my favorite players in this year. I am point, I I do have a point guard bias. I do like point guard. It's my, it's my favorite position. Uh, uh, I, I, I have a thing for point guards in national basketball. So point guards, period. They control the pool. They control the game. They put everybody in place. If you play in the facilitator's role, you got me as a fan, by and large, on the court, outside of Scottie Pippen. Of course, Scotty Pippen is a good ball. But, allow me to finish. Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson, again, another person with some off-the-court issues. He was brought up in a child molestation or some pedophilia situations, allegations. And he was in the finalist for this. It all just came to uh, 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 to the surface right as he was going to the Hall of Fame. Which, yes, we only talk about basketball. We only talk about basketball. We only talk about basketball. Football next week, though, D-Grade. I'll do football next week, bro. Uh, Kevin Johnson. It's, it's ironic that Kevin Johnson, all of his misgivings came up right before he was going to be in the Hall of Fame, but he's still the mayor of Sacramento. You don't want him. He's too trash. He's too classic. I mean, he's, he's too disgraceful to go in the Hall of Fame, but he can still run your city. I don't know, but hey, call me crazy. Kevin Johnson, big ups to him, man. One of the most dynamic point guards I've ever seen. Big ups to him. It's Point guards, point guards. Next up, y'all, it's some people, it's somebody gonna get left off this list, and D Great just called them. There's some people that got left. No, no, actually, D Great, I didn't go. Okay, allow me to make an amendment to my list. People who I saw the entire day of their career. Iceman would be on this list, but I didn't see the entirety of his career. I only saw the very end of his career. But D Great would be right, but I didn't do anybody from the 70s. I knew everybody from the 60s and stuff like that, like Bob and me and things of that nature. Sorry, allow me to qualify that. Shout out to D-Grade for correcting me and checking me. Big up to my man, D-Grade. <laughs> but I didn't do anybody from... This is all live h rap life. Sorry about that, D-Grade. But D-Grade is 1,000% correct with his uh, affirmation of... Uh, his identification of... Iceman George Gervin. And if, if I would have saw Iceman George Gervin, I would have put him in there. But I didn't. Therefore, he's not in the building. But, hey, shout out to D. Gray for pointing that out. But these are guys that I saw play. Next up, there's a dude who I really don't. I ain't gonna lie, man. I don't think he was that great. Y'all think he was great. Y'all only remember these few moments that he had. And I can't really dispute it. But I'm, he's, he would make my list this is almost a fan-friendly list. This is not a true age rap list. And I didn't really want... He's not bad, but I don't think he is great as y'all think he is. He goes by the name of Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller is the next guy on my list. The dude hits some big shots. He has some great moments. I mean, yes, I would, I would be an ass to say, oh, man, Reggie Miller's a damn scrub. I would be the biggest ass in the history of the United States of America to say that. I'm never going to say Reggie Miller's a scrub, but I just don't think he is as hot as y'all think he is. I mean, Reggie Miller has some big shots. I have an issue with some of the things that, the way he played, but you know, that ain't got shit to do with me. This ain't got nothing to do with me. The dude was still great. He led his team to an NBA final. He lost to Kobe and Shaq. I can't, I can't say, oh man, Reggie's a bum, Reggie's a scrub. He, he's just not how my favorites left. I have to give him his peas, though. Uh, Irene said he's the biggest crybaby ever. Oh, you know what, Irene? I don't really put the label of crybaby on any player. Because, you know, if they put that label on one LeBron James all the time, I think all these dudes are crybaby, crybabies. Irene, his sister's a much better player. That's, that's the what I'm saying. But I think they all are crybabies. But some of them are shown in a light in which they look like crybabies and floppers and others don't. Well, I'm going to talk about the whole 
media bias again later on in the program, but some of us get tagged with nonsense. Yeah, they all do, Iran. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, if you've been watching this last dance, my man, uh, uh, he, hey, that's called, uh, my man RC in the building. That's called gamesmanship, RC. You know that. Uh, if you can trick somebody into uh, doing something, yeah, it's called gamesmanship. I can't, I can't be mad at I'm not a fan of Reggie Miller, Irene, and RC. I, he the last dude I'll be sticking up for. But, to be fair, to be fair, uh, Reggie Miller, man, he, I gotta give him his keys. He, 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 nah, I can't sacrifice my reputation as an honest guy on, on the mic. I'll be lying in real life. I'll be keeping it 99 because sometimes I'll be lying. I'll be keeping it right. But in order to maintain my integrity in regards to this, I gotta put Reggie Miller on this. RC, Reggie, uh, RC, Irene, I'm, I'm with y'all. But I gotta give him his feet. I gotta give him his feet. Pick up some Reggie Miller. One of the greatest three point shooters in the league. Uh, he is the antagonist. I think when, when people don't like you like that, even though you're good, I think it is a testament to how good you really are. Me, RC, Irene don't like him, but he still got to be. Uh, I hope Big Illinois got a uh, 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 a seat belt on on the seat. I give because Kyle Malone is next up, y'all. It's number six on my list. Kyle Malone is the most overrated player I've ever seen in my life. Y'all can talk about all these points he scored. Y'all can talk about all this and all that. I think Kyle Malone is overrated, but you still want to be, when you finish number two or three and scoring, when you finish number two and scoring all time, when you take your team to two finals, you go to the league MVP twice, it don't make a difference what I think and what I say. Kyle Malone is one of the greatest players in the league. But Kyle Malone is number five on my list. Wait till you see who I have in front of Kyle Malone. Big up to Kyle Malone. I got to give him his piece. I think he a sucker MC. He bust my man head. I'm from Chicago. Y'all know I got a Chicago bike. I told y'all I got a Chicago bike. He bust my man head for the two sticks. That's, that ain't why he's number six. He's number six because I think he's a limited ball player. He's athletic Charles Oakley, if you ask me. But that's a whole nother conversation. Big up to Kyle Born in Germany. Dominated the SEC. One of the best in-game dunkers in the history of the league. Only player I've ever seen in a game of seven outplay Larry Joe Bird. He goes by the name of Jock Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins is probably most the most underrated ball player in my lifetime. Again, this is, these are the only players that I saw their in career missing in, in its entirety. These are not going back to the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, because I can't talk about that, because in the 70s, I was not even double digits. I saw games, but I didn't know what the hell was going on. I remember 1976, Dr. Jayden went in, and I didn't know what the hell was going on. This is Dr. Jayden. That's all I knew. But, Dominique Wilkins, one of the greatest scores I've ever seen, one of the greatest power dunkers, arguably, between his six in one hand, half a dozen other, with him and Vince Carter being the best two in-game dunkers ever, Big time clutch ball player. Get to give it up to Dominique Wilkins, man. Big up to him. Uh, what a, hey, fun fact. One of the only dudes in Michael Jordan's career when he played a full season, outscored him, made the league of scoring. Dominique Wilkins, big up to him. Now, I got 30 seconds to go. When we come back from this small break, a little, this is a, a feel good story. I want y'all to feel good about this story. Listen to it. I'll be back in 11 minutes. Holla at your boy. This is the end of the bitch podcast. I'm H. Rob B. This is built for this network. Two fingers. I'll be back in just a second. I am Patrick Peterson cornerback of the Arizona Cardinals and a proud member of the LSU family. Picked off by Peterson, the 25. There's a lot of guys from LSU tearing it up in the NFL right now. And it is caught for the touchdown by Odell Beckham Jr. What a run by Jarvis Landry to break a couple of tackles and get in the end zone. But the one I'm most proud of is my best friend, Tyron Matthew. Not what they came to the <laughs> Are you not entertained? If they not, they gonna be. Throws and it's intercepted by Matthew, and he's gonna take it to the house. A 
32-yard return by number 32, the Badger. Time has always made football look easy, but maybe that's because everyday life was the hard part. I still come back to New Orleans because, you know, this, this is my home. I feel like it taught me a lot of things, you know, about life. I was basically raised and nurtured by my grandparents. My mother was, was really young when she had me. My biological father um, is in prison uh, for, for murder. My grandfather died, so my grandmother took my oldest sister, and my family felt like I needed a father figure, so they thought it was best if I move with my uncle, who's my adopted father. Family decision, um, we, I felt like just, just giving back to also, and uh, just giving love when we can. I just moved with my adopted parents, and their kids were into sports. I'd never been introduced to sports yet, so um, I was five when I scored my first touchdown. It was always fascinating going outside and playing any kind of ball with him, because it's not just football, it's baseball, basketball, anything he was always excellent at. We were kind of blindsided ourselves, because when we first adopted Tyron, none of us knew he had any athletic talent like that. The people out there would say, who's that kid? He was real quiet in high school. Didn't say much. He, you know, just tried to lead by example. He had the heart of a lion. So right now we're at Kerry Curley Park in New Orleans East, one of those special places. And there'd be times we'll come to the park and it'd just be gangbangers at the park. Yeah. And, like, they don't even know how to play basketball, but they just want to play against us. They want to beat us so bad, you know what I mean? But... We wasn't leaving the court unless we was the winners and the champs. Yeah, it, you know, was so. it was him. It was him who he. All the time he never wanted to, to lose. He didn't want to nah. leave. Yeah. Playing against murderers, <laughs> robbers, and yeah. you know it just teaches you a different side of being tough. Without sports, I don't. I can't say that I have a true identity. The things that people respect me for is because of sports. You know, so I only had one focus. You know, and that was to really beat everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that got in front of me, and um, yes. that's what it was all about, man. I met Tyron on his recruiting trip to LSU, and we hit it off immediately. I think the first thing I ever told him was that I was going to be better than him, and um, I'm still working on that. <laughs> he took off on the field and was a star, shuffling past defenders with crazy quickness and earned himself the legendary nickname, the Honey Badger. I was like, what is a honey badger? My defensive coordinator at the time, John Chavis, came up to me, and uh, he said, yeah, this is what everyone's calling you. And he showed me this crazy video. Honey badger's been referred to by the Guinness Book of World Records as the most fearless animal in all the animal kingdom. It really doesn't give a He was like, this is the most badass animal I've ever seen. Tyron was a Heisman Trophy finalist in his sophomore season, but with all the success came pressure. I didn't have as much fun as I had my freshman year. I'm the reason this game is won or lost. And, you know, when you when you consider the best player on the team, they expect you to turn the game around and, you know, to make those plays every game. And, and I didn't really know what all came with being a, a, a superstar. Before training camp started his junior year, Tyron had failed multiple drug tests for marijuana. Tyron Matthew is no longer on our team, um, violated team policies. He didn't want to let me go. Um, and even he's crying and, you know, he's tearing up. And, and it was just, you know, just looking at my whole life kind of running away from me. It was devastating. It was embarrassing, you know. It was hurtful, but needed to get to work, you know. Let's, let's get him back on track. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Four former LSU football players arrested on drug charges. You're looking at new video of the men being taken away in handcuffs from a Baton Rouge police substation. For Tyron Matthew, this is a letdown. He attended rehab, was attempting to rejoin the team. For me, when I went to jail, you know, and this is after everything, you know, this is after losing the national championship and, you know, getting kicked out of school and, um, I didn't. I didn't. I, w I wouldn't say that I would have put a gun to my head, but I didn't want to be the same person 
that I was. You know, like I felt like that life I was living, like it wasn't sustainable.